Okay, so now it's totally dry again. Stick my paper down again where it's coupled a bit. A couple of things I'm not happy with at the moment. Uh, now it's dried, and that's this edge, of course. It's not working very well. So what I'm going to do is just with clean water and my round brush. I'm going to scumble that edge up to the top. of the tree the trees the bushes you know just to break that that line because it's far too harsh so it's like a damp damp brush just scumbling it up to the edge at the top there that's all you need to do if you've got a hard edge like that and also the colour that I put on before it was too wet so I'll have to darken it all off again. Alright so it's just as we're going really. Um, this will leave for now. I love the colour. I think it's looking great. But of course we need to take the masking fluid off and we'll do that last. Um, and then we'll make a few detailed leaves to give the shape but I think the colour and the shape of it is, is nice and the way it's uh, mingling in underneath there as well is nice I'm quite happy with this it's got to again a lot of work needs doing when the masking fluids come off the path looks good um, now we need to start work on this foreground now and what I'll start off with is the pots, just to give some definition to these pots. And I will start off using raw sienna. This is again one of my seven colour, one of my seven colour palette, raw sienna. And we also need some burnt umber which is like a darky brown and you, we've already oh no we need a little bit more burnt sienna i'll clean my palette at the moment let's get this out first but i'm going to be using all these colors i've got out i'm going to be using quite often now so i won't bother cleaning my plate at the moment so we've got Raw sienna, burnt umber, burnt sienna. So they're all like earthy colours. And this pot will start with raw sienna, which is the lightest colour. Just mix up a little bit and block out the, the shape of the pot. And just go around. Don't forget. Some, most of the pot is hidden by foliage in most cases so don't forget that and you know try and build a, a full pot otherwise it'll just look wrong and then we've got a chimney pot here she's had that for years and the first colour I'll put on there is raw sienna just all over it You see, I kind of scumble that on dry brush, and again, the darker brown. And while that's still quite wet, just drop that in to the edge. And let it do its magic. There's a very, very slight tinge of red. And like I say, that's now I'll leave them to do the thing and then darken it up as we go. 
And this pot here needs some shadow behind there because the sun, as we keep saying, is coming from that angle. It's just catching a little bit of light. Is a little bit darker. There's loads of pots in there, but you don't need to um, depict every one. As it happens, she's got a blue one there, so I will make that a blue pot. Now I've made a little bit of a mistake because these are set on a path. Not that it matters particularly. It's kind of a trough there. And while I'm at it, might as well put some um, little orange flowers that I've just noticed. So I'm mixing these two colours to make an orange, two earth colours. And I'm literally now just randomly adding just make that a blue path to the doesn't matter because we'll probably crop that part of the picture. And now once again, I need some yellow. Move my camera a little bit. It's a lovely colour, that yellow, isn't it? Some blue in there. And uh, see, I'm not worrying about these running. I want them to run it. It's part of the beauty of watercolour, it really is. Now I'm just going to start building up this green area. And don't forget these, this area is mainly in shadow. Apart from here, so that can be left nice and bright. There can be nice and bright. We'll have a few whiffs of grass going up eventually. Now this area, the greens now need to be a lot darker. Again, I'm not worrying about the flowers because we masked them out, didn't we? We've got green in that tub. Have some coming down over that pot. So the um, the colours have mingled together to create like a stone effect here. That looks okay, I'm going to leave that as it is I think. But again, I need some yellow. Staying with me, little round brush. Now I'm putting yellow into the blue to get really dark greens, which start around about here. I 
And it's the dark green that what makes this uh, little gnome stand out. You know that thing I was telling you about counterpoint, counterchange. Still trying to leave the you know the colours shining vibrantly because they do do that, don't they? This area needs darkening as well underneath the acer, but not too much. While we're on dark green, we might as well just echo that in this corner. Now we, we masked out a lot of daisies, didn't we? So I'm just kind of suggesting their stalks, really. I'm not going to overdo that, though, because, like I said before, we're, um, we're going to wait till the, the masking comes off. 